What's going on everyone? Uh, happy September, it's Kurt, your host. And on this episode, we're gonna be talking about something quite interesting. We're gonna be talking about what is cryotherapy, what are the benefits of it, and is it a carnivore hormesis? So welcome back and happy September. In this video, we're actually gonna dive into the benefits, the pros, the cons. We're really gonna look at the process of cryotherapy and just talk more in depth about what it is. Now, before we jump into the actual details around cryotherapy, I wanna take a moment to just explain why a carnivore channel will be talking about cryotherapy. So the carnivore diet is really focused on eliminating plant molecules. One of the big arguments around keeping plant molecules in a diet is the hormetic effect of these different compounds like polyphenols, curcumin, sulforaphane, turmeric, what have you. And the idea here is that this hormetic effect is actually a beneficial thing for the human body. The human body experiences a stress through the toxicity of the plant molecule or compound which the plant designed to basically kill insects or prevent itself from being eaten by predation. And the human's body can then adapt and it doesn't kill us, it just makes us stronger. As carnivores, we're eliminating a lot of the hormetic plant molecules in our diet. So we're looking for other ways to get hormesis to create the glutathione, to activate the NRF2 pathway. Think about exercise. Exercise in and of itself is a catabolic process. It's breaking down your body. That's what catabolic means. And when you're exercising, you're not actually getting stronger. You're actually tearing up your muscle tissue. If you're not overdoing it, it has a hormetic effect in the sense that your body will resilient. It'll build more muscle. You'll come back more strong after you're done exercising. After you lift weights, you develop inflammation. You'll notice that your body will swell in those areas and it will heal itself and build more muscle tissue and repair. A big part of this is activating what's called the NRF2 pathway. And this isn't necessarily specific to exercising, but it's the idea of hormesis. So the idea here is that when you activate the NRF2 pathway in the human body, you're doing amazing things. It's, it's triggering DNA transcription, inflammation, apoptosis, immune response, cellular growth and development. So it's a good thing to have the NRF2 pathway activated, but you know what else triggers it? Smoking cigarettes, inhaling toxic fumes. So the idea that you do something and it triggers the NRF2 pathway but doesn't kill you could be a little misleading. And certainly when you look at the plant compounds that are being sold out there, the, the billion dollar coffee business, there is an agenda promoting things that happen when this pathway is activated. But what they're not looking at and why we're on this conversation around cryotherapy, which we're getting to, is the idea that a lot of these things can have a net negative effect on your body. Now the media is gonna push the plants and all their benefits and I can see that and, and it makes sense. That's their agenda and it, it's totally fair to think that and to want to do that as these companies. But there are quite a few studies out there now showing net negative effects or even just negative effects around the plant molecules. So if you're taking in these compounds that are toxic, Things like sulforaphane or curcumin, they can affect the thyroid, they can cause leaky gut, they can damage the human gut, they can damage DNA. There are many things these things can do that, yes, you do experience through oxidative stress and, and going through day to day, but the argument here is that you probably can get these hormetic effects in a more healthy way than through taking in these plant molecules, which arguably are not the best benefits to us. Net positive. So there are several things you can do to trigger sort of hormesis, which again is, is this, this experience in your body where you're getting stressed, but then rebounding in a more resilient way. You can exercise, you can get cold exposure, which is what we're talking about here with cryo. You can get heat exposure. And interesting enough, we're gonna go into depth in a future video about light, because light, for example, near infrared red light has been shown to also trigger a hormetic effect within the cells in the mitochondria. So we're getting in the meat of the video. What is this cryotherapy? Well, cryo means basically cold. And so the idea here is a cold exposure that you subject yourself to 
is probably something ancestrally consistent with how we lived back in the day. People probably experienced warmer temperatures and less than comfortable environments for a period of time. And cryotherapy is certainly a way where we can sort of emulate situations where the body might have experienced things like running through a, a very cold river, swimming in a glacier lake, um, experiencing these stressors through the environment, but in the cold fashion. So cryotherapy was actually invented in Japan. In the last 15, 10 years, it's really become a lot more popular in the United States. Really what it's created out of is two forms. There is one form you see where people basically have their head in a chamber and their head is like not in the chamber. These are liquid nitrogen cooled tanks where the body is exposed to liquid nitrogen cooled air that blows around the body, but the head is above these tanks. And the temperature in the chamber can be anywhere from like a minus 150 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And the other way that they're doing cryo is through kind of an electric oxygenated air flow, giant walk-in fridge kind of freezer. And that's the way I've been experiencing it. And that's the way we're gonna talk about this. And that is the idea that you're basically going into this chamber and your entire body's in there. You go in through your head, head to toe, you'll protect some of your extremities like your hands and your feet and your, your ear lobes and your, and sometimes you'll wrap your head because it's very sensitive, but you're essentially going into a very cold chamber. And that chamber that I go into is typically between minus 140 and minus 180 degrees Fahrenheit. It's been a while since we have taken the GoPro on the motorcycle. So I figured I'd shoot a little film today and, and show you guys and gals well, what it's like kind of cruising over to cryo, US cryotherapy here. And then we'll we'll do a little interview with Chase, the owner, and I'll talk to you all about the benefits that are, that are there. Let's jump on this bad boy. Again, ancestrally, we probably didn't experience those extreme temperatures, but we probably experienced cold exposure. And we see it with cold showers, with water, these, these benefits that people have in their body. The idea is that it's reducing inflammation, that it's triggering the nervous system and in a way where it can rebound. So it's creating this very clean hormetic effect. This might be a little bit of an extreme ancestral hack, but I think that cryotherapy definitely has some benefits. And we're hearing and seeing it become more and more mainstream and more popular among celebrities, athletes, big time performers like LeBron James, Steph Curry, Floyd Mayweather, many, many others have been promoting the benefits of cryotherapy. So before we jump into some of these benefits that they've done studies on, which have, there's been quite a, a wide array of them, let's talk briefly about how this makes sense ancestrally. Because when you think about it, you know, stunting inflammation or exposing yourself to cold like why would the body naturally swell or inflame and, and, not, and not just stop that process naturally in the most evolutionarily consistent, beneficial way for the human being? And I kind of had to dig deep to kind of figure this out, but I want to take a moment to explain that before we jump into these studies and the benefits here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through a few points and really kind of break down what happens through looking at how inflammation and swelling occurs in the body and, and explain why cold exposure can really benefit this. So let's take swelling as an example. When your body swells up, whether it's from lifting weights or if you turn your ankle or twist it or sprang it or whatever it might be, when that happens, your body is, is rushing blood and, and inflaming and, and flowing up the area of the injury. White blood cells and other materials in the body rush to the site of the injury through increased vascular permeability. And that's basically just saying, hey, it's expanded, there's more blood flow in this area, we're sending more stuff there. 
The other thing the swelling does is it immobilizes that region, that section of the body to prevent further damage until it can actually repair it. So, you know, you won't be able to move your wrist much if you tweak your wrist because it'll be swollen. But it turns out after the first couple hours of swelling, if you're getting consistent swelling, but you're not having a consistent trigger for the swelling, maybe it's a chronic inflammation, for example, then that can be a bad thing. This can lead to further delay in terms of healing and recovery. It can also lead to over stressing joints and other parts of the muscle tissue around the area and also overexcite the nervous system. Cold exposure can stunt, it can reduce that swelling after that initial sort of acute response the body has to the injured site where it rushes the stuff to it to, to kind of immobilize it and also to provide the white blood cells and materials to help repair. And so when you apply a cold treatment to that region or that area, what happens is it can slow down the swelling and also prevent it from having excess fluid spilling out and damaging surrounding tissue and creating a low oxygen environment. So it slows down the process. It stunts the swelling beyond a certain amount that you initially need to get the materials into the area. It acts as an effective pain reliever and muscle relaxant. By doing this, we get mobility sooner back in the region and we can recover quicker. It also slows the metabolic activity of the tissue where the damage occurred and where there's a lower oxygen supply and can help resist the damaging effects of that low oxygen environment. Lower temperatures mean muscles require less oxygen to, to maintain their integrity. The last point I'll mention, and I know there's a lot of uh, technical jargon here, is that cooling causes vasoconstriction meaning your blood vessels tighten up. But unless you're under like a really extreme, you're falling off the Titanic and you're just in ice cold death water here, your body's going to actually usher blood flow to the surface of your skin or to the surface of the site where the swelling and the, ice, the icing is occurring to make sure that it maintains blood flow and so that the, the site doesn't get too cold. So if you're under extreme cold for a long period of time, your body's gonna run the blood back into your internal organs. But if it's just a short exposure where it's not too, too intense and not too prolonged, then your body actually wants blood flow at the surface area to make sure that the, the cells and the materials at the surface of the cold exposure are staying warm enough to survive. What that does when you're talking about inflammation is it pushes through blood flow into those areas and really flushes them out. And this can bring in white, more white blood cells, it can bring in uh, microphages, it can bring in all kinds of benefits to that area to really benefit and, and heal in the process. So the idea here is that the first hour or two, first two hours of inflammation can be beneficial, but then our biology just demobilizes us and through hacking with cold exposure and therapy, we can actually help flush the body, increase the circulation, minimize the amount of additional swelling, uh, lower the amount of, of oxygen needed to kind of maintain the muscle integrity in that area and also uh, make it so that we can get to a faster point where we can recover on the mobility. Hey guys, uh, my name is uh, Chase McKenzie. I'm the co-owner of US Cryotherapy Austin. Uh, and what you have behind me is an electrically cooled, nitrogen-free, whole body cryotherapy chamber. Now, it's a ton of words. Basically what it means is that everything in there is atmospheric air. There is zero liquid, nit liquid nitrogen vapor. It's uh, everything that you would normally breathe, just super cooled down via an electric refrigeration process. Uh, the temperatures inside uh, get down anywhere between negative 120 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, in reality, what we're actually looking for out of every treatment is a rapid temperature decrease of your skin by 30 to 45 degrees. So we actually measure temperature before and after treatment right on the shoulder. And if we can achieve that kind of significant and drastic skin temperature decrease, that fully activates the central nervous system into the fight or flight response. And that's where we're getting systemic constriction of blood vessels, shunting all of that blood back up into the core where the blood is detoxified uh, and it's enriched with oxygen and anti-inflammatory proteins. And that whole process in and of itself is clinically supported to reduce pain on a whole body scale, reduce inflammation on a whole body scale, accelerate muscle recovery, uh, and accelerate joint recovery as well. So that whole powerful stimulus just really comes from stepping into that sub-zero environment, exposing the body to those sub-zero temperatures, stimulating that response in the skin, activating the central nervous system, 
and then as soon as you come out, we want to open up those blood vessels. We want to accelerate blood flow delivery back out to vascular tissues, especially back out to avascular tissues where a lot of that blood flow is necessary for uh, accelerated recovery. Alrighty, so I mean, you can kind of see inside here, uh, this is about a 10 foot by 10 foot space. The, the beautiful part about this technology as opposed to say the liquid nitrogen tanks is that it's complete immersion head to toe. There is zero height and zero weight capacity. That means we can put four 300 pound linemen in here, a total anywhere between 1200 and 1300 pounds at the same time and still achieve appropriate skin temperature decrease and full uh, activation of the central nervous system. We put seven footers in here. We put kids in here as young as 11 years old and grandmas in here as, as old as 85 years old. The red and near infrared light that we use for the juice is very specific and it has a very specific intended purpose. You'll see when these bad boys light up, you'll see the red light and then the near infrared light. Now the near infrared you cannot see, it's not visible to the naked eye, but it is penetrating below the skin. All of that was a lot to take in. The ideas are there and it, it makes sense to me when I kind of go through it, why actually exposing ourselves to cold exposure at the right time could be quite beneficial. So let's go over about seven main points after kind of digging around, around what I found with cryotherapy. And the first couple I'll mention anecdotally for me personally are one, deeper sleep. Definitely have noticed that I've gotten better deeper sleep when I've done cryo in the daytime and immediately I've noticed my inflammation has gone down. I've, I've, I've felt it in my knees. I used to play a lot of soccer when I was younger. Um, I, I feel it in my elbows when I lift because I do a lot of upper body lifting that's pretty heavy. And I can personally attest that I feel much less sore the next day if I do a lift, wait a couple hours and then go do cryo to kind of cool down that process of inflammation. The benefits I'm going to cite here are from studies and some of them are pretty, pretty quite fascinating. One of the first ones is that cryo will aid in fat loss. The idea here is that studies have shown increased cold exposure triggers the brown fat, the brown fat tissue activity in the human body. And brown fat, unlike white fat, is active in burning calories and using energy. So it's triggering that somehow through the studies that we've seen and helping people with fat loss. We've talked about this a number of times and we've kind of gone through some of the, the uh, ideas around this, but it aids in reducing inflammation. Uh, the idea here is that cold exposure is, is raising levels of adiponectin. I might have butchered that, I'm sorry. It's also lowering inflama inflammatory proteins like TNF alpha, IL-6, and IL-8. This third one is quite interesting, and they've done several studies on different sort of animals, insects, and what they found is that across the board, these animals and insects can eat and consume more things and live longer. So when they did a study with flies, they found that flies at living at an uh, environment of 27 degrees Celsius versus 21 degrees, the flies that lived at 21 degrees lived twice as long. <laughs> Just a six degree difference in the environment added twice the lifespan to these, these flies. They've done studies in cold water with fish where they've seen a six degree Celsius drop in fish increasing their lifespan by 75%. They did a study where they controlled rats and they put a group of rats for four hours in shallow cold water and the other group they left out. And what they found is that the rats that were in cool water ate 50% more calories and lived 10% longer. So we think that the, the, the cold exposure is doing something with hormesis, which is triggering the body's most powerful antioxidant glutathione and also in modulating our genes. I don't know about you, but if I could eat more and live longer, that sounds like a win-win. Uh, obviously the comfort of cold exposure has to be weighed in there with the quality of life. I personally find that I feel fantastic when I do it and it's really not that bad and it's a short experience and it's something to bond over with friends that are interested in that as well. We've seen that it can speed up the healing of injuries in recovery and this makes sense when you think about the process of how it's helping flush the system, stunt the inflammation and, and sort of maintain muscle integrity around the areas where the inflammation is happening and also how it could be triggering some of the body's hermetic effects. There are quite a few studies there's still a lot of, of debate, but in my personal experience, in, in the folks that I have 
done cryo with and had talked with, they've mentioned that they have noticed their deep sleep is much better, that their overall sleep quality seems to be much stronger. There's also been evidence to suggest that it can help with our glucose and insulin sensitivity, which is pretty fascinating and probably one of the most powerful markers for human health is our insulin level, our rested insulin level and our beta cell function. The seventh point I'll mention is that they've seen that cryotherapy can strengthen the immune system and aid in detoxification. And again, this kind of comes back to the same thing around hormesis and the fact that we're seeing it trigger the NRF2 pathway and the body's natural process of creating the, one of the most powerful antioxidants in the body, glutathione. So cryotherapy, it's a cold therapy. You can get it through a couple different ways. You could do the nitrogen cooled tank with your head above the platform. You can do whole body where you actually put your head into a oxygenated electric cooled freezer. Up. Really, uh, <laughs> Such a surprise. Yeah, so that's why she's really taking over. Yeah. Go. Let's go, guys. Wait, let me make sure it's recording. I think it. Yeah, okay. Good, good stuff. That's good. We're going in. Alright, Kurt, you're going to go in for 3.15, and Logan, you're going to go in for 3.45. Go ahead and skip pre. Um, you're, go ahead and just hang out in the pre. Okay. Alright, that's good. Ready? Yeah. Let's do it. The way the cryotherapy works in a nutshell is it's, it's stunting the inflammation, it's, it's reducing it or stopping it, it's helping also with vaso constriction and then the body's also forcing and flushing out blood flow and keep the body tissue where it's exposed to the cold um, with warm blood internally. So it's moving around and flushing through the body internally, this blood flow and this fluid flow of all this great benefits. So I just got back from cryotherapy. Yeah. As expected, I feel calm, I feel chill. Some of my joints, my muscles, like they just, they feel lighter, like less, just more range of motion. There's less inflammation kind of slowing things down. We'll talk about the benefits, the pros and cons here in the video, but uh, my personal anecdotal experience is that I feel more chill, more calm. I'm able to kind of just stunt the inflammation, the soreness post-workout. And I've done a pretty intense week. I've had heavy weight training on Monday, on Wednesday I did legs and shoulders, and it's Thursday now and I'm just kind of like, I, I didn't get the best sleep last night. So overall, uh, I find that cryo is pretty beneficial in terms of my personal experience. It can aid in fat loss, it fights inflammation, it can increase lifespan, it speeds up recovery of heal, uh, of, of, of in, in healing of injuries, it improves sleep quality, it can help regulate blood sugar levels, and, and it can strengthen our immune system and detox us. There's a lot of interesting stuff out there. It's fairly new. The studies are still out, but I think it's definitely worth trying out. I'm going to put a link in this description of the video. If any of you live in the Austin area, message me, I'd love to take you with me. I have a, a pretty good relationship with the US cryotherapy and I will also be doing new videos about more things to get hormesis in the future as a carnivore. If you like this video, thank you so much for making it all the way to the end. Hit the live subscribe, the like subscribe button, comment, let me know what you do. If you do any sort of cryo yourself, whether it's jumping in a lake in your home or you have a cold bath that you set up, and, and as always, I really appreciate you watching and thank you very much.